Hello and greetings everybody. In about two months Crusader Kings 3 is coming out and I thought well why not just dig out the old Crusader Kings 2 again and have a playthrough of this wonderful and even funny game that we can play here for literally thousands of hours. And I'm not going to make a, too much of an intro here. I've played this qu game quite extensively some time ago and in this case here we're warming up for Crusader Kings 3 and yeah well we're going with the Vikings of course. I love the Vikings, I love the Viking DLC that um, was for Crusader Kings 2 and in that case here we are also starting with the Viking Age, so 867 AD. We can choose them here, that we get a little intro, that I'm not going to read the text there too many times, and custom game is what we want. Usually I'm going with, well here in the center of Bavarian we have Salzburg, so this is where I live, but in that case here, now nah, we are well reserving that for Crusader Kings 3. For now I want to go up to the far north, and here we do have, well, Scandinavia and there we want to start and I'm not just starting with any one of them but one of with the hardest. So difficulty is pretty high for this one here, 80% um, in Nordland that is. It is a province with only two, um, well, locations, only two cities and temples so not really much and all of them around here are, well, really really poor so the only thing to get to wealth and stuff like that is raiding Great Britain or that is England Scotland and Ireland here that we need to raid and then with the money that we get well increase our territory to become the king of Scandinavia the king of Norway of Sweden Finland and ultimately of of Scandinavia that is and probably well of course Vikings in Sahara Desert who knows it might be possible this game though is well I, I don't think it I don't see it as much as I'm um, going with as much territory as possible, but rather well just having fun with RP characters, RPG characters, you know. This is what this game really is about, those characters. Now, speaking of characters, we need to create one. In that case here, let's have a few rolls added to create our first proper character. I'm not going to roll too many times now. He looks rather cool. Um, the only thing, of course, we need to be blonde as we're Scandinavian. A good blonde character, perhaps another hairstyle that we have here. Something that makes him look... Oh, yes. With that one here. That looks. That is looking fine. So this is our first one. Coat of arms. Something that is looking nice. White colors in the back. Red. Let's go with blue or black. No, let's go with blue. We should have that. There it is. A bit of blue there. And not a snake, but yes, a wolf. Perfect. That's us. And then here, a proper name. I already know the dynasty name, that is Ragnarsson. Right, oh. and then we just need a, f a surname, a first name that we have here. Geir, Kolbjörn, Bragi, Arnbjörn, hmm, Eilif. Something that actually sounds good. Knut, Knut Ragnarsson. Isn't that a perfect name for that? And what I also want to go here with the traits is we want to be more a bit for, well, a skilled tactician or a brilliant strategist. Let's go with the strategist first as this offers us more martial support. We want the martial for the rating, so we are we're going to be a fighter. In that case, though, we are 33 right now. That's a bit old. Aren't we a bit old for that? I think the skilled tactician is a bit younger than, yeah, 28. That is fine. And with that... We're not doing anything else here because it just would increase our age and that is something that we certainly don't want to. And with that, Knut Ragnarsson it is of Nordland and here we go. Minus 15 per uh, fertility, that's something we cannot afford. So let's go with Holmfried here. We do get, well, at least one prestige. Let's turn this one in. She's a bit younger than us, that's fine. And the other thing, we do need an ambition as well. In this case here, we want to groom an heir first because this gives me a fertility increase of 20% very good let's go with that and a focus and we're going with the war focus here because that gives us even more personal combat skill and we'll need that for our rating and stuff like that if we survive that long so let's unpause the game and we're starting at 867 the marriage has been sealed um, now we just need to decide do we want some gold or some prestige out of it we're going with the prestige in that case since we are tribal we really really build upon prestige to get our troops up and running so when we look at our retinues here here we can now then recruit retinues for prestige directly in that case I cannot do that right now because we're really on the beginning and it scales with our skills but we are married now very good so Holmfried there she is we are now creating a dynasty of everlasting 
glory. In that case here, we might just lose after five episodes. Who knows? You know, in this case, I really want to just see how the game goes. Uh, makes it more exciting, I think. Um, it's an RPG, so we might build up a big empire and then lose half of it due to title succession problems and stuff like that. We'll just see where it drags us. You know, the goal is not to conquer the whole world, but just to just have fun with your dynasty here that we have, the Ragnarsson dynasty. A famous writer proposes to compose your family chronicles. All right. Yeah, give him patronage. One gold, we can afford that for 25 prestige. And... No, we did not get proud of it, but, well, still, 25 prestige is pretty good. That's for the red news here that we could go for. Now, my leisure people of Paris have progressed beyond our technical level. That is really good, so we get a bonus of uh, military, economic, and cultural points already for our technical points for our research. Very good. And looking at my levies, oh, we are not that... Oh, what is he doing, actually? We have a levy size here of 460 right now. He's at 300, so we still cannot really go for him though we are now only starting with the recruitment there we don't have a better marshal unfortunately yeah our court is really our court just, just sucks uh, we just have to say it like that unfortunately but other than that at the moment it's fine all right we also get the message here that we need to Master one of the key components here. Um, light infantry is the best one with the tribals at first. So in that case here, we're going with the light foot leader since we're going to have lots of light footed soldiers at some point. Right, and we are at 500 now. He's going down at 186. So I think it is already time for the first conquest. Finn Marku, so Hugh Chief Amot of Finn Marku. It's been nice knowing you. You're only 17. Um, let's declare war on him and go with subjugation right away right let's raise our army of 500 proud nordlanders as we're called i'm here knut i'm one of the generals we cannot have another general at this point but we are going with that and we're going to attack he's got the upper hand here as a defender but he's gets number wise he's so low that it really doesn't matter so that is our first easy goal and he's probably the only goal that we can really go for at the moment because this one here has 500 already, this one has 600, this one has 700 and this one has 800, you know, so we are really, really bad here at the moment. Um, and here we are. Now we are already laying siege to that Finmarku tribe village and a son was born. Who? My courtier. I don't care about my courtier. I need a son. Victory. And that's already it. As we can see, 100%. So he is already giving up. We offer the peace and enforce our demands. And boom. Has usurped the title. So Knut has usurped the title of the chiefdom of Finnmark from Amot. Upmeye, he is called. Right? So and this the war has ended. And now Nordland belongs to us. What actually happened now with the guy that we just waged war upon? No idea. Let's disband our units now out of this war here two interesting things happened first of all now well obviously we got a new territory nordland is bigger now on the map that is something that i'm extremely proud of as you can see we can now read our name from high above nordland and yeah what we have now is a tribe here that actually already has a ship builder so in that case we could then raise the ships once this one here has repaired a bit and we have gotten 100 prestige out of this war. And that is pretty important because now, in our Nordland village here, we can now go with the ship builder that we have it. it gives us six galleys. Let's build that for 100 prestige that we can build now. And yeah, we could then probably also upgrade to the market village there to get a bit of money out of it. Yeah, by the way, this is our village. Our first village here, it is so incredibly low. It has a fort level of one and a tax level of one. Just look at, uh, for example, Constantinople. Can we look at that already? That we have down here. Look at that. It's at 13 and 12. So it's level 13 and level 12, the full tax level. That is a fully upgraded city at this point. And by the way, can we now send our spy master over here? No, we still cannot do that. Right, our spy master stays in Paris. And let's unpause the game once again. And unpausing is so cool in Crusader Kings, I think, because there's so many dynasties and people fighting around here now, scheming and stuff like that. We are rather, well, sleepy at the moment up here because we only really have a few neighbors here. None of them is particularly strong. Oh, there is 
Isn't that the guy that we just destroyed? No, he's just looking the same. Right, and we also have a bit of a bigger levy size now of 600. And since we got a bit of prestige, can we go with a retinue now? Yes, we can get the first retinue here, which is 100 light infantry and 50 archers. So the retinues here is your personal army. It's my personal army, you know. I got the levies from my villages and stuff like that. So over there, I can raise the people and they fight for me for, for a period of time. And then I can put them back to their original work. You know, so in that case, I get a few levies there, but my personal army is my standing army that is always active and working for me, right? So when we re recruit those guys here now, it's starting at 1, but it's then growing up to the maximum number of 150 here. Um, through staged war games and large-scale exercise, I feel confident I can master one of the main military disciplines that is heavy infantry or cavalry. Let's go with heavy infantry as well. So we are pretty good when it comes to military already. We have 14 Marshal point there right now. So 20 would be the real master than the expert. That is something that absolutely doesn't... Yeah, King of Hungary created a new realm there. That's just way too far away. And we got a nice sigil here as well. Chiefdom of Nordland. I like the ship. Now as we can see, our personal army is growing. That is fine. Balance is fine. Prestige is not looking that good. Um, my ship builder here is getting finished soon. In Nordland, I can already raise a ship now too, I think. Yeah, there is our first ship that we can get over here if we want to. And let's have a look. Now we got the personal army here plus the levies then. And could we conquer something? I don't think so. No, they're all just way too strong at the moment. Oh, and a little bit later, fate smiles upon me. My wife Holmfrid is pregnant. That's very good. We get a bit of prestige out of it. Though I'm not happy with how prestige is looking at me right now. Because we have been at peace for too long. Now that is something we certainly can't afford. First of all what I want to do is my steward here is building a legend. So that's a monthly prestige increase of 0.9. That is something we need. And the other thing is well we just go to war with anyone here basically. And this one is the weakest. So we just declare war on him. And for... Rovanimi, that one here, right? For this one here, we want to get this one. That's our conquest. So in that case, we are now not at peace anymore. That's good for my prestige, which is going up again. And don't forget, we are building upon prestige here. And now we can raise our armies here as well. So we got a few, obviously, around 700. In that case, he's got 300. So actually, got a pretty nice or pretty good chance there of winning. My seer... Torgar has been discovered charging money for various religious favors, putting the gold in his own pocket. We can decide now, intolerable, we lose 50 piety with that, though we have enough piety, right, and, or disappointing but understandable, temple vassal opinion is minus 10. Um, in that case, we're going with that for now because I really cannot afford to lose anything here, and he should be liking us a bit, but he's at 4 only, right, so... Bjork has plus 5. Yeah, it's not that much better, right? Alright, there's our little army. That's fine. So we do have 700 here. Um, and we do no longer lose prestige here as long as we keep them. And I don't think that he's going to attack right away. Though he is going somewhere. Off he goes there. Let's attack. We are at 700. We might win, we might lose. No idea. The galley, let's put it away again. We don't need it for the moment. He's probably coming up. From this side here then at some point but let's just take this one for now he's nowhere to be seen 700 and we're still growing here by the way because this is my personal standing army oh he's actually coming in from the other side but he's losing people here because he doesn't he can't supply them for that period of time right there we've taken his main holdings and let's get back over here um, he's already at 76 there when it comes to his holdings there, you know. So we might actually... Oh no, let's let's go over there. Right, so he's got a nice or a good bonus here though. That's a bad thing. Right, so it might be a bit difficult for us to win this one. Alright, but we got a nice leader there and we've won. Let's take back our territory there here. And we barely lost anyone, that's good. So I think we've won this war. There's no doubt about that. Let's win it back and now we are at 100%. Very good, let's offer the peace and enforce the demands. 
And boom, look at that. He's been pushed back, so he's now down here. That's his last one, and we captured this whole province here to our territory, making us another 100 prestige that we have there now. Let's put our levies back. I'm unmarried. Oh! Did I lose my wife? When did I lose my wife? I did not see that. My wife died already. She was only 25. Oh god, we have to find a new one. We are 32 already. We need to get children up and running here. Alright, I won the war but lost my wife. Alright, we need to find a new one. Courtier here, Bothildr. She's actually pretty good because she's got a good combat skill tactician. She's cruel. That means she is um, very good with, well, weapons and stuff like that. And she's lustful. Now, this one is really important because it gives her a fertility bonus of 20%. Because, she, well, she wants to scoodly do with me all the time. And in that case, lustful is just the perfect one. Let's go with her. Do we get something out of this one here? No, only one prestige once again. So, there weren't really... Um, good marriage options either. That's probably one of the main problems when you're playing up here in the north. You don't have that many choices. Now, because I don't want to rely on my lustful Bothildr all the time, we're also going to take some concubine if that is possible. There is one at least. Right here, this courtier Nordland Bjork. That sounds a bit too male to me, but yeah, let's take Bjork here and she is now my court, uh, my concubine. So we can do that since we are a tribal leader. Um, and with that, we can take our comp concubines here. Uh, my retinue is at 120 and growing once again. We still get a bit of prestige out of the war that we just won. With 100 prestige, we could purchase something again. The house trail? Uh, no, let's, let's not do that for now. Right here, warrior gathering ground we could afford, but um, I rather not. I rather want to go with Kimi here that we could probably take. Yeah, most likely. Declare war. We cannot do that. We cannot afford to lose 270 prestige. Dude, I'm not going to lose. Alright, he's got 700. We got now 500. Oh, this one's pretty weak right now. They're waging war. He's defending. Oh, that was too late. But he's got a new leech now. The petty king of Viking. King Harald. So he's lost, but Harald is pretty strong now. He's got 3.5k armies there. And look at that, Viking. He's really growing there. If I had a daughter... Ah, uh, no. He's got a married son there. I don't know. It's not looking that good down there to the south. He seems pretty strong. I want to get this Kimi here. I still cannot declare war though. Time is running. Money-wise, it's looking fine. So it's not going down. That's what I mean when, it, when I say it's fine. You know, we're not going to make much money on our own. We are a tribal after all. Um, after I had many, or I've made another courtier cry, the third one in a short week, I felt a bit embarrassed. Is this really who I am? A cruel man who likes to hurt people? Um, cruel is not that bad because it gives us a personal combat skill increase. Oh, Thor, what have I done? We would get kind with that. Diplomacy plus two. Ah, that's not so bad. Let's go with this. So we are kind now. And worrying reports have reached you regarding your Marshal Bart. It seems he has been using your soldiers to extort money from the peasantry in Nordland. I will deal with this later. He has forfeited his office. Local revolt risk is at plus ten then. In that case here, I would lose 50 prestige with this one here. If I keep him, I will just uh, risk um, some revolt, but I would do that with this one here anyway. And he's actually a pretty good marshal, you know, he's got 12. I haven't gotten a better one at this point. So let's just say we'll deal with this later. I want to keep my prestige at this point. Uh, we can still not declare war. This one, this one, oh, she's also pretty strong. We can declare war against him and for some reasons, but not against him. Even though we would never lose this war here. Alright, so we also need to look out for a bit of raiding then at some point. Um, we can now get an army of up to 700 from retinue 150. My domestic is 600. And yeah, those islands here are probably a good first batch here. So none of them really has... Oh well, actually not that bad. This one is pretty weak. 
Does it also contain a bit of money there? Yeah, 12 gold. That's fine. Um, Northland here, that's too strong. So Iceland. Um, and my neighbors, of course, that is. So Kola here, for example, we have three gold. What I can see is six gold here. And I don't think they're that strong. Something like that. So raiding also um, prevents that I get this peace penalty that I would get. Uh, get too quickly there and uh, we still haven't gotten a son or a daughter here that is so if we if we die now the game would be over so i hope that she's pregnant soon i mean she is 17 and i'm in the perfect age here too knut of nordland and we got great plans here can we now declare war on him no we still cannot do that um we could however go to Kolar and raid it oh sap him or sub me, that is. So there's a bit of gold here, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That might be possible. The same with this one here. We could raid him. Keeping him weak, that is something. Let's do that. So let's get our army up and running here. Let's get all of them to Ravanyemi. All right, over here. 876 soldiers at the moment. Let's merge them and put them to looter. So now, whenever they're on the foreign territory, they loot the territory. And let's do that here with Kemi, that is. The advantage of raiding not only is that you get quick money and prestige. Obviously, you have to do some fighting there as well. The Battle of Kemi. It has been ages since I felt so invigorated by a battle. Every day our unit is moving as if connected by some unspoken bond. I exclaimed eagerly one night, or a higher power of some kind. Um, this is all you, my lord, one of my soldiers says, a look of genuine surprise on his face. Um, you're right, modesty will get me nowhere. And we get brilliant strategist and proud. Or this is a team effort soldier. We would get brilliant... Don't we really have the brilliant strategist? Humble, which could be a monthly piety there. Um, you're right, monster will get me nowhere. No, let's actually say it is a team of food. We gain brilliant strategist and humble. Right, there's the victory. And now we can loot it. No, we cannot because the fort here is stronger than ours. So let's get over here to the next fort. And while that is happening, let's get another army up and running here. Light infantry and heavy infantry. We can afford that. This one. Get it over here because we need a few more soldiers to get this fort here. But don't worry, we get it. Now, as we, as I said, the first advantage is that we get a uh, quick gold. Now, the same thing here. These defenders are really strong. Right, this one up here is a bit weaker. Let's get over there. Let's merge them. As we can see, it is growing now. And, oh, very good. Now, my wife is pregnant. That's very important. So, that is that. Oh, he was actually attacking. Is that for real? I've just wasted 75 prestige. And, like, he saw into the future and attacked right away. Incredible. Right, I do need another one, though. We do have a bit of prestige. Let's get it up again. And let's attack them. Battle is very important. Also for experience points for my character. So there he lost a few again. Let's get up here and let's recruit another one. Right, there it is. And let's just stay there. And a daughter was born. Ursa, she's called. Right, we can keep it that way. So Ursa is no heir to us, unfortunately. Alright, now we can finally pillage something here. Defenders, not that many. He's got a nice army there, though. But not really strong, so we could probably subjugate them as well. At some point. Alright, and let's loot them. Oh, let's, well, raid them first. While well, this personal levy here is growing. There it is. Now we're looting, and we're looting about three coins. <laughs> but at least it's something, right? We got two gold already, and we're looting that. And the other advantage of raiding is, now that I can finish my sentence, is you can weaken your enemies with that, because obviously they have um, not that much money anymore than to use on something. So let's get down here right away. Perhaps we can destroy him, but he's fleeing the scene. Right, he's down here now. Yeah, I don't think we'll get him. He's f oh yeah, very good. Now we got him. Yeah, and I clicked on I clicked on 
the other tile there in the very second. That was bad on my part, but we got it. Now there he is. Let's destroy him. Oh, that is actually another army entirely. Let's go away from here. We don't belong here. And truce is expiring, so we can now finally uh, declare war on him again as well. That's fine. There's my next army that we have. We do have made a bit of money there. That's fine. That's fine. So that's a bit of raiding here, but it's not really lucrative raiding, you know. Lucrative raiding happens then down there in Great Britain. Right now we really just want to make a bit of money there to afford bigger armies. While my training has greatly improved my physical prowess and my skills in combat, it has not had a positive effect on my looks. My skin has grown rough and blemished by a countless amount of old bruises and small scars. We get Uncoth. Attractive attraction opinion minus 10. And oh yeah, another research point here, another technology boost that we could now invest into something new for the construction. Let's merge them. So that's 900. How many are there? Oh, that's that's over 900 here. We have looted that already. This one is a thousand as well. They're all pretty strong here. So raiding my neighbors probably is not the best idea. But with a thousand people, we could actually go with raiding overseers and overseas any already. Let's get rid of my retinue there. And my concubine is um, pregnant as well. That's cause for celebration. 500, we can declare war. 500, that is absolutely possible. Let's, yeah, let's expand to Kimi here, which has two tiles. Alright, but I'm not entirely sure if I really want to go with him there. He's got a good levy. I mean, not the biggest one, but he's got a bit of gold there on the side. He could purchase a merchant. He's actually... Hmm, he might be able to purchase a merchant army there. Oh, very good. Bothildir is... Oh, that is such a, f a feminine name. I love it. Bothildir. And Bothildir is pregnant once again. We do get a bit of prestige out of it. Now we... And a daughter was born to me at the same time, probably from my court here, right? Something like that, Pira. Pira, that is fine. My wife seems to be going through a particularly harsh pregnancy. Perhaps it would be best for her to retire for a few months for public life. And I will tell my wife to take leave for the pregnancy. She can do that. A man is brought in shackles before you. Apparently he is a missionary from East Frencher who has been preaching his heretical faith among your people. He claims to be on a mission from God and has been caring for the sick. Yeah, we don't have Christianity right now in Nordland. And... Oh, we can't allow Catholics in our realm. That would give me 50 gold, but he dies. And this one here is that we get a new one. Hesso. Sounds like a dog. And Hasso here has a good learning curve. So he might be a very good seer. And we would have a court physician. That's that's a good one. Court physician, if I'm ill or my wife is ill, we would have someone who helps us before we die. Um, but he's a Catholic. And we can't allow Catholics in our realm. That would be, give me 50 gold. That is a hard choice. I mean, we really... Nah, let's keep him. Court physician is a very nice trait to have. Sure, yeah, we could invest the technical advance here. Having a look at that, the construction is probably the best one here. It gives us the sick house, the soup kitchen. We could improve our keep, town infrastructure, church infrastructure. Um, let's go with construction for now. So there we get now a full level here, as we can see. It gives us build modifiers, so buildings take now 3% less time as well to construct. In that case here, ah, the war against him. I'm torn. It is risky. This one here is even weak. No, he's... They are all pretty weak there. And we lost someone. Spymaster died. Yeah, that's probably quite common that the Spymasters die so many times. And let's just have another one here. Hasso, our court physician. Oh, no, I don't want to risk him. And Björk is my concubine. She's really bad at it, but she's going to be my new Spymaster. I really don't want to lose my court physician. I just 
invested kind of 20 or 50 gold. The weeks pass and your Catholic court physician keeps talking about his religion. He's even claiming that the blessed virgin could grant you health and a long life. I can't Odin would strike me down. Oh, oh no. I would become Catholic, but I would lose 50 500 prestige. And yeah, he dies. It's the only way here. 50 gold. Oh, and very nice. We now have a new son. He is not called Gnut, but he's called Gnooper. <laughs> now, that is a fantastic name for something like that. So, Gnooper is now our new heir here. He is zero right now. He loves us. He is doesn't know anything about the world but what he knows is that he's going to have a struggle in his life because that gives us rowdy a martial skill and willful an intrigue skill or brooding intrigue martial well, let's go with yeah let's go with struggle there for now so he has to struggle in this world and that makes him strong a son was born gnooper and in that case oh Arnie uh, approaches you, my leech. I have a great idea for Monument. Something to raise our cultural status and make the people notice what a great ruler you are. I would require some gold. Alright, surprise me. 1.5 gold, that's fine. And I'm not going to declare war and I finally decided I'm not going to declare war right now because he's got a pact here and he is actually allied with High Chief Voito. And High Chief Voito is down here and he... He's pretty strong, right? So he has a levy size of 1.7k. So in that case, I would lose the war. So far, that's not going to work. He, he's pretty weak, right? So he's got a levy size of 500, of 600. He's got no allies, no pacts whatsoever. Oh, and she's pregnant again. So that might be a nice choice here. But before we do anything else, I want to go for some rating, some proper rating first. Some money there we need, some prestige. Let's raise our levy. Up here in Nordlands, we have 900 now, and this is my second strongest one. So we have a thousand. Yeah, we can fill those galleys here. So I've got 13 galleys right now. That is something we do, and that is something we do in the next episode. We finally start the raiding on some of those islands down there. Stay tuned.